Now I did find something that was really interesting that really worked for me. And any of you that have a Neo Rhythm at home, I really encourage you to try this so that you can give me feedback on the YouTube channel. It was like the dam burst open. It was like, boom, you know, all the energy coming in. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Recyc, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology and ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm your medical doctor, confidant, Dr. Cody Rawl. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Neo Rhythm and diving into how you can use it best for your meditation. You know, when I first started using this device, I was really impressed by its initial effects, and I love how they advertise for using it for sleep, for focus, for relaxation, and I think all those things are great, and you really can use it for all those modalities, but I think that what's especially interesting to me with this technology, and to remind you, this is low-intensity, repetitive transmedic stimulation technology that this is using. How can you use this for meditation? How can we use this technology to take our meditation to new heights? And naturally I was really curious what would happen if you combined it with use with the Muse headband. You know, I talk about the Muse headband a lot on this channel. I talk a lot, a lot about meditation. So the combination seemed obvious to me. And I had a lot of questions when I first started using it. It was, does the Neo Rhythm actually affect the EEG patterns of the Muse headband and contaminate the signal? What's the best way to use the Neo Rhythm headband with the regular Muse meditation app? What's the best settings to look into when you're using the Neo Rhythm when you're trying to use it for meditation? And then simply, what's the best way to meditate with the Neo Rhythm? So we're gonna take a look at all those questions and answers here in this video, and I hope you enjoy. So I did a video in the past in which I took a look at how the Neo Rhythm might contaminate the Muse signal. And it was difficult for me to really find any signs of contamination, especially when you compare it to the electrical signal contamination that you would get from the Halo Sport. And just to remind you, this is because from the Halo Sport, you're getting direct electrical currents coming from the nibs to stimulate your motor cortex, whereas the Neo Rhythm is relying on magnetic waves instead. So they shouldn't cross over too much into the electrical signal of the EEG coming from the Muse. So really quickly before we move on, I wanted to learn more on this interaction between EEG and TMS. So I dove a bit more into the subject. Now with the clinical grade RTMS machines used for treatment of depression and traumatic brain injury, the FDA approved ones, they are discharging magnetic pulses in the Tesla range. They're actually causing neurons of the brain to fire as action potentials. These pulses do have a significant discharge and disruption pattern with contamination of the EEG signals. Kind of like what we saw from the direct direct electrical stimulation of the Halo Sport. Basically, it's a much larger discharge than what you would find in the Neo Rhythm. Now in the research community, there have been efforts to do EEG filtration and timing techniques to gauge how the high intensity RTMS affects brain waves because EEG is so relatively cheap and widespread. They basically have to avoid or filter out the disruption from the large magnetic pulses of the clinical grade TMS. Now for the low intensity RTMS of the Neo Rhythm, the effects are much less detrimental to the EEG signal. In fact, it seems common practice in the literature to combine EEG data collection techniques with low intensity TMS in order to study its effects. This is because the low intensity RTMS uses magnetic pulses in the millitesla range that do not discharge neurons, disrupting the EEG signal. We saw Dr. Jurgensen using EEG in both of his randomized control trials without discussion of signal contamination in the EEG. Now, I would have liked it if his papers would have dove more into the topic and go more in depth about the interaction between EEG and low intensity RTMS for us biohacker enthusiasts but it might be more common knowledge than I know that the low intensity TMS does not have as much of an effect on the EEG signal. And if anybody finds literature on that, let me know. I did ask him about it in our interview, and he did say that he thought Neo Rhythm and the Muse should be able to be used simultaneously because the effects of the low intensity RTMS appear to be much more subtle and thus can be measured with the EEG devices such as the Muse. Overall, the EEG signals seem to be much more a product of the actual neurons themselves rather than actual magnetic pulses from the device themselves causing artifacts in the EEG signal. So I've talked a lot on this channel about using the Muse headband and the regular Muse app for meditation. And if you wanna check out my calibration techniques, you can take a look at my Muse Mastery ebook. But one of the things that I explain in depth on that ebook is the process of calibration. You can really calibrate with your eyes open and eyes closed 
to, to demonstrate to yourself the effect of alpha blocking on calibration. And this can in turn educate you on the power of calibration before going through the Muse meditation exercise. The questions that I had were, does the neorhythm affect the calibration if you use the neorhythm before the Muse exercise? And or should you calibrate without the neorhythm and then go into the meditative exercise with the neorhythm after calibrating without it? Overall, what I found is that you should calibrate normally with the Muse headband and then actually put the neorhythm on afterwards to help stabilize your focus so that you get better scores on the Muse headband. It's really not a magic solution that's gonna change uh, your brain waves immediately when you have it on for the calibration. So I actually find it more advantageous to put it on afterwards to stabilize your brain waves more in the alpha rhythm so that you can concentrate on your breath and get a better score from the Muse headband. You know, I was really surprised when I was using the Neo Rhythm with meditation because it actually supported some of the ideas that I've had about my meditative techniques, probably what brain waves are playing into it and how to affect those brain waves. And I'll take you through that. You know, I've had tutorials in the past in which I explained how I go up different focus centers within my spine and open them up to energetic circulation and then direct my attention to higher energy levels to raise my vibration as the raising vibration uh, heart mind alchemy group would say and then using that energy to bring it back into focus on the breath or namita. And really in terms of brain waves, the research supports that your brain is mostly within a relaxed alpha rhythm if you are just concentrating on the breath. But if you try to elevate to higher states, you're getting a lot more of beta and gamma. And you can see this on some expert level um, mind monitor graphs that have been shared on this channel before. So when you think about that and how to incorporate in the neo rhythm, one would assume that the lower settings for meditation and relaxation or theta meditation are better at stabilizing your attention on the breath and relaxing your overall central nervous system. And that's really what I experienced. I could sit there watching my breath for longer on a relaxed state and my mind was less likely to wander. But I will tell you on that neo rhythm setting, it was more difficult to ascend to the higher levels and feel like I had energy circulating through my central nervous system, probably because the beta and gamma waves are a little bit suppressed from that neo rhythm setting. And in contrast, when I would actually use the neo rhythm in the higher energy and vitality settings that promote beta and gamma waves, it was more difficult for me to keep my mind on the meditation object, but it was easier for me to get to those higher energy levels, or at least I wasn't getting blocked in from getting to those higher energy levels. So it was easier to get those higher energy levels when I directed my attention up to the third eye and while I'm doing spinal breathing. So I noticed that. So I think which neo rhythm settings to use during meditation actually would depend on the person. And I just compiled a, a report that I'm giving in Hawaii over a virtual conference about my brain circuit a training program in which I take people through different modules and target different brain waves to see their tendencies. And really what I've seen from the brain circuit training program is that some people tend to gravitate towards having too much theta and some people gravitate towards having too much beta. Either they're too drowsy in their meditations or they're too heightened and distracted in their meditations. And it's a dance about when to actually introduce those brain waves in your own meditation practice to get to the higher and the deeper levels and enhance your energy reserves so that you can focus on the breath so that you can have Demita come up and get transported into these wonderful things called jhana. So when I think about all this, I really think about if you have someone that is getting too drowsy and falling asleep during their meditation, the energy and vitality settings might be appropriate for them on the neo rhythm. Whereas if you have someone that is uh, highly anxious and has their mind darting all around and they can't concentrate on the breath, then you probably want to do, use the meditation theta and meditation uh, calm and relaxation settings on the neo rhythm to help them with their meditation. Now, if you've got someone like me or some expert level meditator, what settings should you use then? Well, you could do mind lift exercise to determine your uh, the areas that you need to work on so that you can educate yourself on how to use the neo rhythm within a program or at home like that. Or the other thing is that you could just try them out and see how it works for you. Now, I did find something that was really interesting that really worked for me. And any of you that have a neo rhythm at home, I really encourage you to try this so that you can give me feedback on the YouTube channel. So what I found interesting and you should try at home is if I did the meditation calming and synchronization setting, which focuses mainly on alpha with some accompanying theta, 
and I went through uh, my focus points within my spinal breathing, opened each one of those up, and then just focused on my breath for 10 to 20 minutes, it kind of put a suppressant on it. It's like I was focusing on the breath and you know nothing amazing was happening, but I was there very present and focusing on the breath. And then what happened is when I took the neo rhythm off and then attempted to access those higher levels, it was like the dam burst open. It was like, boom, you know, all the energy coming in. So try that at home. Try these uh, priming and grounding techniques that I described in videos, like the tutorial on how to go to deeper meditation with, with the Muse headband. And then uh, use the alpha settings on the neo rhythm, and then take the neo rhythm off and see if that energy has sort of built up from that unwavering attention on the breath, as Ajahn Brahm would say in the Meditator's Handbook. So I've actually found that both in the Muse headband and in the Neo Rhythm now. With the Muse headband, it was you were using the regular Muse app, um, you went through those preparatory exercises, and then you used the regular Muse app to concentrate on your breath for longer periods of time by using the neurofeedback to keep attention on the breath. And then once the exercise was over, ascending to the higher levels. And then now I'm seeing it in the neo rhythm as well. Instead of having that neurofeedback that's encouraging alpha while you have your attention on the breath, you actually have the TMS that's encouraging alpha while you maintain focus on the breath. And it's as soon as you remove either one of those inputs, you can really uh, go up to your third eye and just feel like these focus points, these energy <laughs> waves come over you and really uh, go into a higher level with your meditation. So really interesting that I saw things in both and I'll be incorporating that into future studies here on Tech for Psych. But I'll leave it at that. You know, I, I just don't think that the neo rhythm is affecting the muse signal very much. I would recommend using the neo rhythm uh, after you've calibrated in the regular muse app if you want to do that. I think that um, you know the different neo rhythm settings can be applied at different times to different people, and mind lift training might help you identify that. But if not, you can do trial and error to see what works for you. And as a trial, if you want to try these spinal breathing techniques, I would recommend for the neo rhythm using it on the alpha setting, the uh, meditation calming and synchronization setting, and doing the preparatory exercises, having the neo rhythm on while you are concentrating on your breath and doing that for 10 to 20 minutes and then taking the neo rhythm off and seeing if you get actual some big energy surges. And I'd be really curious to see if um, people that have not experienced that before can experience it now after doing that with the neo rhythm. So that's everything today. I hope you enjoyed the discussion on how to incorporate the neo rhythm into your meditative practice. This is Dr. Cody Rall with Tech for Psych. Talk to you again soon.